people. And uh, a very, to this uh, event, a very special welcome to our friends and colleagues at our sister law schools, faculty, students, staff at the Norma Mandy Law School and the Hewitting Law School. This is, uh, I think this is a first for the council. This is a first for the council, I'm pretty sure of that. COVID-19 has absolutely ushered in a whole new world for, for us all. And, and we are taking advantage of the predicament, quote unquote, that we have been placed in. Our EDLS's uh, orientation theme is a whole new world revisiting legal practice, the future is now. I'm so grateful that Madam Justice Jillian Lucky has consented to be our, our distinguished guest of honor this afternoon. And I'm so happy that you all are able to join with us um, as she uh, speaks to us about a new practice in this new world, in this new reality that we are um, as legal practitioners and soon to be legal practitioners we'll, uh, uh, as we're encountering. So without more, Welcome again, and I'll turn over now to Mr. Guy, Sinitura Acting, to introduce Justice Lucky. Thank you. Thank you very much, Principal Galanis. Uh, my name is Clive Guy. I am the Senior Tutor 2 at the Eugene Dekutu School. And for this academic year, the carrying out duties also of uh, the Office of Senior Tutor. And it's my task this evening, of course, to introduce uh, Justice Lucky to the room, Principal Glanis is so right. This is an absolute first that we have people from all three um, campuses, so to speak, as a part of one session. I think that is absolutely excellent. Um, it, it, as a very quick thing, um, it sort of brought back a bit of nostalgia. For those of you who went to Cave Hill, I think you might probably understand it. When we attended Cave Hill, we met people from everywhere, all through the region and you, you were forced to, to bond with them, you partied at island nights with them, some people got married afterwards, it was wonderful, and then suddenly we all had all these faculties, and people didn't know each other anymore. And look at this, COVID 2020, here we are, all back, one big family, I think just as council intended it, when the faculty was started, when the was school was started, some time ago. Very quickly, I first met Justice Lucky, of course, at Cave Hill. We were there at the same time. It was uh, one year, I think, behind me. And we, it, there was an immediate bond. It was so exciting to be there. And when I was speaking to her about this, Justice Lucky was so ex excited to accept the offer to be able to do this. It reminded me, back in those days, for you who don't know, Cave Hill had a, we were in the bush up on the hill. There were a bunch of cows all around us, and the cows had a way of attacking people. And Justice Lucky very nicely took on the cow and won. Let me just put that. Talk about strength, fortitude, bravery. She strode into the faculty of law building. I always remember that. And said, oh, a cow attacked me every road, but I dealt with that. And came to do what she had to do. Justice Lucky has brought that sort of strength and fortitude, that bravery, to everything that she has done so far in her career and in her life. Um, very quickly for her bio, and I asked her to keep it short. Um, yes, Lucky was called to the bar in 1991 and joined the judiciary in 2009-2010. And then again in 2014, during the period 2010 to 2014. Justice Lucky was appointed to the Court of Appeal in January of 2020. Prior to her appointment as a judge, um, in 2020, Justice Lucky served in the position of Senior State Counsel in the Office of the DP, Minister in the Ministry of the Attorney General and Legal Affairs, Opposition Member of Parliament, and Member of the Crime and Justice Commission. While lecturing at UWI, the University of the West Indies in the early 1990s, Justice Lucky was responsible for the implementation of the long distance learning program for the elements of commerce law. This enabled, of course, participants in the region to enroll in the program. Justice Lucky was a columnist, host of the TV program, Just Chill, 
and principal of Academy of Fishery Studies. In 2018, Justice Lucky completed a certified program in countering transnational organized crime at the George Marshall Center in University, which is absolutely tremendous. I must point that out. And of course, Justice Lucky is um, also in 2018, she completed uh, some other courses and she's now a lecturer at the Faculty of Law, UWI, I'm trying to keep it short, and at the Hugh Wooding Law School. Justice Lucky, of course, has a passion for education and law and was appointed the chairman of the Judicial Education Initiative of Trinidad and Tobago in January 2019. That means that Justice Lucky also assists in training judges. I think that is absolutely tremendous. Justice Lucky has commended workshops in the region dealing with various topics, including the admissibility of digital evidence, money laundering, case management, principles and methodology in sentencing, gang and terrorist prosecutions, the intelligent investigation of serious and violent crimes, judge alone trials, the new reality of judge alone trials, and maximum sentence hearings. Justice Lucky is committed to enhancing jurisprudence and implementing measures to reduce the backlog of criminal cases. And I love this one. She ended with, Justice Lucky is an avid Star Wars fan. That is absolutely excellent. So am I. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, students, I would like to bring in Justice Lucky. I do believe Chairman may join us at some point in time, the Chairman of the Council of Legal Education, uh, Mr. Reginald Moore. And so to the principals of both law schools and the senior tutors of both law schools. Um, Justice Lucky was so ready to accept this invitation. And Mr. Norman Davis of the uh, Norman Manley Law School was so excited to be a part of the process. So I'm going to turn the floor now entirely over to the star presenter of the evening, um, Justice of Appeal of the Supreme Court of Judicature, Trinidad of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you very much to my very good friend, Clive Guy, for your wonderful introduction. Principal of the Eugene de Pooch Law School, Ms. Tonya Bastian Elanis. And Tonya, I hope I'm not reading you wrong, but I think that really brought back fond memories for us, not to say that was 1992 Aladdin. Since then, Will Smith has done the remake with Aladdin. But I saw you, Principal, and I hope I didn't read the body language wrongly. But your smile is giving it away. And this is the level of virtual hearings where I'm looking at you and I too am going, oh, why didn't they just go to another person for us? You just can't beat Peebo Bryson and Regina Bell with that wonderful um, selection. So principal just thumbs up if I got you right with your body language. It might be bringing back beautiful memories and um, for all of us, a pleasant good afternoon. I am here to take you through what I hope is going to be an exciting session where we speak about technology, evidence, virtual hearings, and excellence. And let me get the elephant out of the room. I am 53 years old. A generation is 30 years. Anybody under the age of 23, therefore, because I'm saying 53 minus 30, I love math, is 23. If you are under 23, yes, there's a generation gap. But if you're 23 and over, you are within our generation. And I'm happy to say, that being in our generation and even being in what I understand is Generation X, a lot is happening. You heard the principal of the Eugene de Pooch School make the point that we are in a global pandemic. And yes, it is something that is troubling. We are not out of the woods as yet. But in every disaster, it builds us as human beings. And it means that that is the real test. When people tell you, I love you, I love you, I love you, that's not enough. It is when you are tested 
It is when you are ill and that person has to deliver care. It is when you may suffer a body part, the loss of a body part, and the person then has to give you that tender loving care. As we say in the Caribbean, talk is cheap. Action is what we're looking at. And what has happened with this pandemic? As we have the experts seeking to get the vaccine, we have the governmental institutions telling us how we must social distance, how we must wear masks. By the way, I have my mask. Just This is an example of what you call proof direct evidence. Those of you who will be doing evidence, you'll hear about direct evidence, real evidence, documentary evidence, digital evidence. You'll be getting a taste of it this afternoon. And I want to say to you all, you are in exciting times. I wish I was a student. I wish I had the chance that Clive spoke about the cow. That cow and the reason, and I say it now, although I know there's no statutory limitation on criminal activity, it wasn't criminal activity. The cow was my livelihood. I used to milk that cow. And I was very concerned when the decision was taken to move the cows out from that field. That was my life. That was my livelihood. How was I going to milk them? I thank all the Jamaican students who used to take my, buy my cow milk. And when the cows no longer had milk, I went to vote and vote milk. But that's another story for another time. The point is, Student life is exciting. And many of you coming to the law school, whether it's Norman Manley, Eugene DePooch, you were in law school, it's like two more years, academic frustration. No, two years when you can build the Caribbean nation. This is a time when we can be leaders, people. Look around, I have friends in Singapore, New Zealand, Australia, South America, North America, the European continent, Africa, India. And I have been showing them what we are doing in the Caribbean what our law schools have done, what our faculty of law has done in terms of the examinations on board, making sure they were robust and comprehensive. Speaking about the courtrooms and virtual hearings, sharing with them our cases. I recently ruled in a matter in which the application was for in-person hearing. I said, no more. And I was told by counsel in another matter, well, judge, when it gets back to normal, there is no getting back. It's not about us going back to the future. It is about us going forward to the future. And you all, in all the law schools, have an opportunity to let the Caribbean lead. And we are leading. I want to say a round of applause to those of you who are in the older generation. But for the young people like me, you know, you do the snapping of the fingers called a round of snaps. And I can see some of you all don't even know how to follow through with the round of snaps. To Mr. Clive Guy, this was his initiative. All right. And for the older people, I see you all are learning very quickly. And this is what it's all about. So. My role this evening is not to share with you PowerPoints about all the law evidence students you're going to get that from in Hugh Wooding Law School and you're going to get it from the other lecturers in the respective law schools. I want to tell you you're in an exciting time. And to all of us who are the course directors, the associate tutors, we are in support staff, those of us in admin, the world has changed and the face of our law schools have changed. Our law schools are no longer now just the students or the lecturers. It's about IT, it's about the administration. And that's what the judiciary is now. In every single country in the Caribbean, your judiciary is not just your judicial officer, it's your court administration. We are only as strong as the court administration. And I want to say a hats off to the Chief Justice of Trinidad and Tobago, the Honorable Iva Archie, O-R-T-T, to our court administrative ex uh, uh, executive, who is Master Morris Allen. And in all the islands, your respective chief justices and those in the, um, the CA, as we call them, or the court admin section, in all the law schools, for us to really mean it when we say when you're on the virtual platform, your eyes, your jaws, because you'll be speaking, back and shoulders need to be constantly exercised. So getting that out of the way this afternoon, it is to excite you, it is to motivate you. And I'm going to prove to you beyond reasonable doubt with the use of evidence, direct evidence, real evidence, witness testimony. I'm going to be using digital evidence to prove to you virtual hearings are the way forward. And we can use this technology, engage the technology to make us what we are meant to be in the Caribbean. And that is a strong nation leading the way. For too long, we have been seen as a region that is following. We're not following. See what? Clive arranged with all the law schools and principals are bringing and the senior tutors. This is the whole new world. And we are getting it right. We're going to continue to get it right. How I wish I was a student, but I am thankful to God that I'm a course director. But you've heard it from me. You want it from live and direct. And to Barbara, who's smiling. Thank you, Barbara. We're giving a prize, Barbara, to the person who engaged me most. And that prize will be sent to you via FedEx this evening. You keep looking out from 10 o'clock tonight. And I assure you, that package will come. If it doesn't come, you don't call me, my people will call you. We're gonna hear from a student, another student, a former student. Let's hear what it was like because you think you're gonna have it hard, you're not. I can tell you, course directors, this year in the three law schools had the challenge. All 
of us have the chance because we were in transition. When the transition is over, like when parents have a first child, as the transition, the second child comes along, and I'm not saying it because I'm a second child, but they've gotten everything right. They know not to wake up every time the child cries. Point I'm making is we were able to get a Yatna Norville, who is a scholarship winner from Trinidad and Tobago 2015, who being called to the bar in 2020, a merit student who was in this transition. And I asked Ayana, I said, let this young generation, which includes me, let us hear from you. What was it like going through this virtual hearings in terms of how we had to teach? I'm talking about the teaching in the law school. And I ask you now to welcome with your snaps, Ayana Norville. I am a Hugh Wooding graduate of 2020. And this year, hmm, our challenges were plenty. When COVID hit, it was worse than a hurricane and with all the changes, we students nearly went insane. We were in a turmoil. Some of us got depressed and all the studies just added to the stress. We didn't know if classes would be suspended and for some of us, it seemed our academic lives were ended. But with all the confusion and the uncertainty, we realized that there was an opportunity for all of us to take up our game because we were warned things will not be the same. Virtual classes with everything online, we are learning in a technological time. So this is not about darkness and gloom, but learning to use platforms like Zoom. To students who are starting this year, trust me, you have nothing to fear. See this as a wonderful experience where you can build character and resilience. And know that your lecturers are all aware that you will need extra loving care. Focus on being brave and bold as together we enter this whole new world. Could we give a round of applause? Stop, wouldn't do it. And as I said to Ayana, my people in Hollywood will call you. Don't call us, we'll call you. I'm telling you, there were a lot of people who lined up for that job, but Ayana won them. And it wasn't only because she came at a price within our budget, which was free, but I want to tell you there was a long line. Ayana, thank you very much. And a round of applause, a merit student from Pimodic Law School, showing with her resilience, Ayana didn't just crawl up and say, oh gosh, no, look, thanks at the front. What she did is she said, you know what? I'm going to continue to aim for excellence. And that is what she did. And it could not have been easy for students. I know that I'm a course director, but we were bonding all of us. We were talking to the course directors in other areas. Norman Davis, a big shout out to you and to Clive, as the three of us were thinking, talking, brainstorming. That's what it is, a body system. So we're talking about this brave new world and we must all be going to it. As they said in Star Trek, now I know when I say Star Trek, for those of you around my age, and I know everybody is not 53, everybody this afternoon on this platform is 23, we know William Shatner, then we know when Star Trek came again, these young people know the new generation, but the concept is the same. To boldly go where no one has gone before. I know I am Star Wars, may the force be with you, but the point is, that is what we're doing. And it's so brave. You ever saw those actors and actresses shaking in those movies? They were brave, even though they didn't really know where they were going, but that's another point. So we're talking about the future course. What is Gillian Lucky talking about? Some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, good thing I don't have Gillian Lucky as my lecturer. And others are thinking, oh my God, I really am lucky not to have Jillian. Anyway, that's just a joke, you don't have to laugh. But I want to tell you, you think you're so modern? Well, I want you to just listen now. Every one of my clips, less than a minute, I want you to listen now to what the future court is and what we have to prepare for. You think COVID giving us pressure? COVID is making us rise to the occasion. This is our future court. They say justice is blind, but how would you feel about a robot judge? It seems no job is safe from one day being outsourced to artificial intelligence. And in the criminal justice system, Judge Judy could become Judge 3000. According to the Daily Star, law firms are already using AI to perform background research. So why not eventually replace lawyers, judges, and jurors? Lawyer Tom Garardi tells Forbes it may even be considered legal malpractice not to use AI one day. 
today. While it may make for less exciting legal dramas in Hollywood, removing the human element does have its advantages. Unlike a random juror picked off the street, AI jurors would have a much broader legal understanding with unlimited knowledge of past precedents. And when it comes to swearing to tell nothing but the truth, according to the Daily Star, people appear more likely to be honest when talking to a machine. But while a robot lawyer would likely be cheaper than one made of flesh and blood, filing an appeal after a robot judge's decision would be a tough sell. You could imagine telling somebody the robot judge was biased. You could imagine telling the robot that the robot got it wrong. Oh, geez. I'm just showing you. We think that we are in a new normal. We are, but the normal is changing so rapidly. Let us get accustomed to the role artificial intelligence will be playing. And if you think, all right, well, judge, will begin with you, honey babies, they could begin with you too. So always look for those skills that you have as an attorney at law that will make you above the robots, above the artificial intelligence. Learn to be able to start that level of adaptation. And where do you get that? You get it in your law school. That is what we are training you to do, to adapt. Sometimes you're going to have to see something going one way one day and the next way. All of us who wrote our exams and took our time to write our exams, this is before COVID. We didn't know we were going to do an online examination, meaning deliver it. We had to adjust. We couldn't rock back and say, well, when it's over, we then give the exam. What would have happened to you all in the courtrooms? We couldn't say, well, we'll just wait till we could have jury trials again. Bahamas, I know you have the constitution, the right to jury trial. Other jurisdictions don't necessarily have that. So what I'm saying is we had to find ways and means of ensuring the administration of justice. Speak to somebody who's fighting for the custody of a child, who's in a bad marriage, who's in a situation of domestic violence. Tell them, well, we have pandemic, you know, so we can't do anything right now. No, they want to hear you say, despite pandemic, we can still make it happen. And this is how it will happen. It calls us to recalibrate, calls us to use that level of innovation. I am so proud this evening that our second witness who will be relied upon to prove the case of using technology and why it is so good to move ahead is my own judicial research counsel, Shikari God. Shikari, help me put this together. Shikari, in fact, is the one who is making sure everything goes right. Why? Well, there's a van downstairs because we are in my chambers. There's a van downstairs. And if she doesn't get it right, the van has been told it will be leaving at five o'clock with Shikari. If she gets it right, she too, like Barbara and many others, will be getting their little prizes this afternoon. I'm so proud to have Shikari, who is almost five years at the bar, you know, she's five years, who sits in our courtrooms, the virtual hearings. And many times IT looks at her because when we Shikari was able to put it up on the screen, and that's innovation, that is skill. And I hand over now to Shikari, who's gonna share her experience in the spoken word, as Ayana did, about virtual hearings. I just love the virtual court. And I know it's a battle still being fought. Some love the new transition, while others find it's a failed mission. So virtual court means we have to adjust. And knowing technology is a must. As a GRC, I find it exciting. Assisting the call while it's virtually sitting. I think the focus must definitely be to benefit from the technology, to deal with backlogs and efficient hearing, ensuring justice in all the court's dealings. Please for Shakari. Shakari, I've just told Ivan. Hello, Van. There's no need for you all to wait on Miss Shakari Gordon. She'll be staying with me. When I said Ivan, I hope you hope it was the prison van. But if you didn't get it, well, the jokes are just moving faster than some of us. The point I'm making is. Look at Shikari Gordon. When she graduated five years ago, did she know she'll be sitting in virtual hearings in the judiciary? Because she's been with us for almost four and a half years in the judiciary. Shikari had to adjust. The whole means of delivering service now is adjusting. And I want to tell you and all the law schools, as a judge, how much I benefited from learning about the pedagogies. I didn't even know what the word pedagogy was. But learning from the pedagogies on the virtual platform they're delivering, because that's what we're using now in terms of the courtrooms, is going to be different. And therefore, the law school, giving us two years in transition, it's six months, but giving you the two years to get it right. The way we moot, the way we prepare, the way we deal with evidence now is going to be very different. But I want to tell you, remember AI, artificial intelligence, robotics. And I want you to understand why we always have to make ourselves that big R word I tell all my students. R is for relevant. Always remain relevant. Because you see, the next little clip is about a minute and a half. It's Pepper. Pepper the robot. 
Pepper made it to the UK Parliament. I never went before the UK Parliament. My stint in Trinidad and Tobago, the Parliament was short. Pepper, the robot made it. But I want you all to listen carefully when Pepper is asked a question about the role of humans. Listen and see if you picked up what I picked up from Miss Pepper. What is the role for humans in the fourth industrial revolution? Robots will have an important role to play, but we will always need the soft skills that are unique to humans to sense, make, and drive value from technology. As technologies fuse and are used in ways that were not envisaged before, a new way of thinking is needed by tomorrow's workers. We will need people who can spot ideas and think across traditional sector divides to drive value from technological innovation. How can robots help students learn in the classroom? At Middlesex University, I work closely on projects with final year students from robotics psychology, biomedicine and education. Students program me to engage with audience in a range of environments and social settings. For example, Joanna and I are working together to adapt my interfaces to work with primary school children with or without special needs to develop their numeracy skills. Joanna can give you further information about this project. <laughs> Thank you, Peppa. Thank you. I think we should give a, a round of applause to Peppa and the students. Yes, yes, you all give you a round of applause to Miss Peppa. You all heard that part, and this is about evidence she was before the UK Parliament. You heard the part when Peppa was asked the role of humans. You heard how Peppa slid in there, workers. Peppa talked about the workers developing that skill. Barbara, you get an extra prize for all that enthusiasm. Pepper slid in there nicely. Well, you know what we will expect is for them to develop these soft skills. You know, the humans have these soft skills and to learn the technology and be innovative. And Pepper slid in because from the workers, well, if we humans are the workers, who you think the bosses are? The robots. So we gonna make sure we are step ahead. Pepper, let Pepper fool all with her salt and Pepper, Pepper coming after us. Pepper reached the parliament in the UK and I ain't reached there yet. Anyway, we're moving on. I hope this point is being driven home. I know some of y'all in Eugenie Pooch and Norman Manley saying, listen, there's too much energy. Oh God, thank God we're lucky, punning all the time, that we don't have this person for evidence. For those of you in the evidence class, homework coming, the cake of Blastland. Next week, Friday, B-L-A-X, D-L-A-N-D, that name again, Blastland. And that is what will be taking place. We are gonna be discussing the case. So we're gonna be changing the way we do things. You don't have excuses anymore. I was in traffic for an hour. No, the traffic you're having is from your bedroom to the bathroom to get into your zone. And this is what the excitement is. And what I want to say to all of us in the Caribbean, we're dealing with a real thing here. We're dealing with a pandemic. And I don't want to forget what the pandemic is for us. The pandemic is something that is real. We have lost lives in the Caribbean. We continue to fight and there's always hope. When you have that four letter word called hope, I am telling you, you have everything. And where else would I go to prove that possible outside? I will go nowhere else than to everything that we like. Clive, you play Clive, you are a Star Wars person. I didn't know that. I will be asking you some questions after, for example, I'll be asking you which arm did Luke you lose and when and where. But let's just go to this very short clip from Star Wars. We had to have Star Wars telling us about the importance of hope. Sure you secure the airlock and prepare the escape pods. Your Highness, the transmission we received. What is it they've sent us? Help. And yes, I am back with you. I am back with 
you and I am here in the Millennium Falcon. Ty, did you realize I'm in the Millennium Falcon right now going through a little bit of your shower? And this is not what you want to have happening. And yeah, we're going to get right back. Okay, look, I didn't have my full Hollywood crew here. This is how we do it in Hollywood. Many of you would not know that. In fact, all of you wouldn't know that because none of you are from Hollywood. And remember, those of you who want to be agents, who want to be on Hollywood, walk of fame, remember, do as Ayana and also watch a car reading. And then let my your agents will call mine. If you don't get a call, that's because you were not chosen. So I'm back to reality, just trying to show off a little bit that I can move from the Millennium Falcon and I speed back into my chambers. We're coming down to the end. What is this all about? What has this session been about? Some of you may be still be saying, well, what is about? I'll tell you what it's about. If you take nothing else away from me this afternoon, it's to say you have a role to play. Attorneys at law in waiting. You are our future. You are the ones who will be the people fighting the Terminator and the robots and making sure we get it right. You will be the ones shaking all of those who are still saying, we waiting for everything to get back to normal. Nothing is getting back to normal. This is the normal and it moves forward from here. And that's why we need to rise up. So what do I mean by rise up? If you leave it nothing else, just remember these words, rise up. R, recalibrate. All of us lecturing to you have had to recalibrate. Students had to recalibrate. You have to recalibrate. Staff, IT, court admin, everybody had to recalibrate. We couldn't just sit and say, Oh God, you will come into our end. No, because we have to deliver and we have to enhance delivery. So recalibrate. In the old days, we used to say, give the teacher an apple. Now you have to say, give the teacher an app. Get it? App, apple, laugh. No laugh. Thanks, Clive. Clive, a gift coming to you, boy. A gift coming to you. Right? And what we have to understand now is in our days, Clive didn't know, you know, in our days, we had Facebook in the 70s and 80s. Our parents used to tell us, put your face in the book, Facebook. Get education. All right, moving on. What did the I innovate? What did Clive Guy do this afternoon for all of us? Innovation. Did he focus on the COVID-19 challenge or did he say, you know what? Let's see if we can get these three law schools. So the first time as the principal of Eugene Food Center, the other principals, Norman Manley, giving the support and Hewling Law School. Let us innovate. It's not going to be the same way. I hats off to you, my friend for thinking about this and giving me the opportunity to be on my red carpet this afternoon with everybody else, of course. And then we need to strategize, body up, body up. I bodied up with Dr. Martha Devines, of course, director of Law School, and Mr. Rudranath Maharaj. When I was going to stress, I used to call Martha all kind of hours. Martha, how could I do this better? How do I reach to the students? You all also have to body up. Have somebody helping you wake up for class, making sure you brush your teeth for class, looking good for class. You have to make sure that you have your strategizing, enjoying the experience. E, energize. Come on. I know I'm not as excited as I could be. I'll take it up a notch if you need. But it's about excitement. It's about having discussions beforehand. Be on the WhatsApp chats. And you could repeal. We have started being, what we do now, when we have a case, we're in a WhatsApp chat, all the judges sitting, discussing the case, sharing everything. Because that's what it's all about. And you utilize the technology. Look around at your resources. Look at see how you could use it. Don't look at what you don't have. Don't look at, and I'm making sure I don't get free advertisement. this month. Don't look at the bottle of water that is only quarter filled. I mean, three quarter empty, sorry. Look at it, quarter filled. That's what you need to be doing. And P prioritize, don't burn out. Don't burn out. Make sure that spiritually, mentally, physically, socially, and emotionally, you are in good order. And that's why I say, rise up, recalibrate, innovate, Tanya. strategize, energize, utilize, and prioritize. Virtual hearings, whether you call them in court, we can get a, a whether you call them that. us being, whether they might come, don't worry. I am not going to send you to jail. You are not going to be stopped from passing one, collecting you $200, but please turn that mic off. Remember, keep the mic off. And what I'm saying to you is when you rise up, you recalibrate, innovate, strategize, energize, utilize, and prioritize the technology. Understand how evidence may be coming in different forms and fashions. The way you write is going to be important now. I can tell you as a judge, we're looking at the writing. Let's yap in more writing. Make sure it's comprehensive. Make sure it's clear. Make sure it's concise. Body up. Get your mentors. Virtual hearings are here to stay. We will now have to work out our jury trials, our future, or our past. Tune in next time when we speak about it. 
And what I'm saying to you is, be happy. It's like in Jurassic Park, Fallen Kingdom. If you didn't see the movie, turn this part off because I went into two spoiler alerts where they said the dinosaurs were now going to be living with the humans. It was a new world. And yes, it was about the cloning and everything else. Spoiler alerts done. Clive, again to you, my friend, I say thank you for the opportunity. I have come to the end within time. I want to say to all the principals, the senior tutors, to all the course directors and associate tutors, to the students of our school, the Caribbean is in your hands. Come on, we had the Usain Bolt, the Hazy Crawfords. We had all these athletes. Think of the West Indies team when we went on the pitch, we used to definitely win. Think of the West Indies team now that when we go on the pitch, we just make it more exciting. So what I'm saying is, let us work as a team. You are our future. Don't go back. Only look forward. It's a whole new world. Go bravely. God bless all of you. And thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Slucky. Um, I realize we do have a few minutes um, with us. I was, I was looking in the chat, and, and uh, it's amazing the responses. Students are, are like, oh, they're ready to applaud this, that, so on. So it, it really, that is, that is absolutely awesome. Um, and indeed, as, uh, before we get into Q&A, as just Lucky said, that this really is the future. There's a nice little trick Justice Lucky did. Did you also that little switch from the background that she had into the cockpit of the star? Did you all see that switch? And then back. That is where the law is now. That is, it's no longer science fiction. It is where we are now. Justice Lucky spoke about AI. We sat over the summer because we were preparing for you students and we looked at Justice One presented us with Vincent. And Vincent is now, I guess, going to rival Wilson that has been around for a while. And when Justice Lucky spoke about whether or not it would be legal malpractice if you don't use Vincent or, um, or, or Wilson, I guess, I, 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 I can't lie, I paused for a second. Because we, as persons at the law school, then it means we must expose you to these things. Because we don't want you, you know, to end up in any malpractice action. It, 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 was, it was tremendous. But I will pause here, and of course, I will open the floor for questions. Persons, I'm going to ask you, please, um, if you want to write your questions in the chat, you may do so. I will relay them to, um, to Justice Lucky. And likewise, persons, of course, in an orderly fashion, may ask their questions. What I will ask is that you identify yourself and uh, where you're located. Because we have people in the UK, we have people in the Bahamas, we have people in Grand Bahama, people in Trinidad, Jamaica, Belize, all in one room. So I'm just going to ask you to do that for our purposes, please. The floor is now open, of course, to, for any questions that you may wish to um, you may wish to pose to Justice Lucky. Uh, Justice, may I? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, Justice, my question is, would you suggest that there is now an urgent need for training, seeing that many of the people in the practice now are not as techno technologically savvy as would be required, considering that you're saying that, um, well, this is the now, is the normal, and is the future. So, the comments on that, please. And what I will tell you is that it's happening in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean and it's allowing all of us to benefit from it. For example, judicial officers, I'll include myself, I had to learn about pedagogies in terms of who would in law school, how to deliver, and also for the courtroom. Because remember, as judges, we are also having to adjust, adjust our skills also. So what has been done is through the law associations, and to me that's the best vehicle, through the law associations in the various islands and countries in the Caribbean, we can learn because learning is ongoing. It is a time, my friend, if I may say, is it Mr. Smith? Am I getting you correct, Mr. Smith? Mr. Yeah. Smith, I, this is a wonderful opportunity for us to promote, as Jamaica has done, professional development. In other words, we talk about continuing education. 
This is what it's about. Continuing education is now going to be driven by technology to ensure that persons have the skills. Junior attorneys are now helping the senior counsel to understand the platforms. So I'm saying in faculty of law, where we start, and of course we start in the schools, but I'm talking about tertiary education, faculty of law, we talk at human in law school, so we're taking care of that bunch, the Generation X, as they may call themselves, or Z. And for those who are already in the profession, that is through the continuous training. And there have been many of the programs offered. And because, as Peg is showing us, we don't have to do it, restricting it to a country. When we know a particular country is putting on the platform a particular kind of training, dealing with what you're talking about, open it to the whole Caribbean, open it to the law associations, record it and send the recordings. So we are all learning and the judiciary, I can tell you, has been the much of the training in Trinidad and Tobago has been judiciary, judiciary training because our Chief Justice, the Honorable Iva Archie or TT, is an engineer, engineer first and lawyer after. So it is his vision that has been driving the need, not only to train the judiciary, so, but to train everybody. What's the set of training the judicial officers and the users of the court if we're not training? The, the self-represented litigants. When we asked self-represented litigants, and I had one, do you know we offered her a training course, not me as a judge, but offered her a training course, offered to send the judicial support officer to her home to let the other side know also. But that's the level of support we're giving to everybody. So they're not excluded, but included too. I hope I've answered your question. Justice Lucky, I have a question. What can we do from sitting in your class? I know you like students to come prepared. So what can we do to prepare for our first class beside Blastland? All right. Blastland, when you read it, is a case that deals with the whole issue of relevance and degree of relevance, and it's a very debated case. What you're going to get from all your course directors in all the law schools, what we are doing is beforehand, you will know to prepare. So somebody asked the question on the chat, is the Blastland in 1986 case? Yes. And what you have to do, is you have to make sure now that you engage in it. That's not, it's not a case in a vacuum. It deals with hearsay, which you will learn later on, but it deals with relevance. And that is what evidence is about. Raw, like a line, R-A-W. Relevance, admissibility, and weight. And what Blasa deals with is that important context, concept of relevance. Because all admissible evidence must be relevant, but of course not all relevant evidence is admissible. So if you're doing a case, any kind of case, if you're making a submission, for those of you saying, I know what Lucky talking about, I don't intend to go to a court, one day you may be making a submission. You always have to be relevant. It's when you lose irrelevance, people get rid of you. So if I know they never ask me to come back on an orientation, I know I lost my relevance. Thanks for the enthusiasm for the first class. Uh, Justice Lucky. Hi, Norman. Hi. Hi, Norman Davis, course director for Evidence. I collaborate with Mr. Clive Guy and Justice Lucky. It is their initiative, and I just want to rise up and virtually thank both of you. Your enthusiasm is contagious and inspiring, especially um, for someone like me who is not very tech savvy and well known to be in need of improvement in that regard. So thank Norman, you both I, very much. No one, I don't want to let you get away with that. I want to say Norman has been a part of it. In fact, Clive, Norman, and I are in a WhatsApp chat. Norman, you were very much a part of our discussions when we were discussing the type and kind of question, what we were looking for. You have always been a part of it. And I keep telling you, Jurassic Park is not an old time thing. Jurassic Park is about the new dinosaurs. And you are one of the new dinosaurs. Take it from me. They're looking for the intelligent ones. Yeah, all the others can be by but. I'm telling you, there's, a, there's all of us, there's room for everybody in Jurassic Park. And in, in fact, I don't know now, the, the dinosaurs live in with the humans in case, spoiler alert, you didn't see the last one. Thanks Thank for you that, Norman. Thank you. There's a question in the chat, Justice Lucky, from Gary Russell. And the question is, do you think virtual hearings are more effective than in, than in-person hearings, comparing both before yes, the and pandemic I and now during the pandemic? And I've had the opportunity to sit in both. I moved from a high court judge where I was doing judge alone trials and the jury trials, then came up to the Court of Appeal in January where we did not have good choice hearings in the court of appeal, and now I'm going through it. What it calls for more, thanks to the question, is preparation, preparation, preparation. Writing has become more important. And what is happening now is that because the writing has to be more comprehensive and precise, when in courtroom, you're in timelines now. 
So many of us who have been advocating that you need to set that line so you're not getting a whole long discourse with people making submissions. It is really about people making submissions, zoning in on points, very strong case management, case management before trial, case management during trial. And what you're having now is everybody on board zoning in on issues virtual hearings are the way to go but gone are the days of course and i said this in the method next case i gave that decision um about a month or two ago in which i said gone are the days of the district you have your day in court and you're shining up all you know you don't sort come out i want my day in court now you have to shine up your technological armor now you have to read witnesses differently so to me virtual hearing in terms of adhering to what is our overriding objective as judicial officers to hear cases and determine them justly expeditiously and you know, making sure they're effective, we are getting it with the virtual, the virtual trials. We really are. Another uh, question. Just if I, I may, I know this is um, really a student uh, portion, last question, but I have to ask this. So the transition from the jury trial to the judge alone trial, I, and I know that was a quantum leap because when I first heard about that many years ago in Nairobi, Kenya, at a conference, People looked at the judge from Bermuda like she was crazy. Even the people in England looked at her like she was crazy. And you have moved from that now to a virtual hearing. I would just love to hear your thoughts about what can we do to help train the students to get, you see those leaps that suddenly took place? What could we do, as you're a tutor too, to, to get them to make those leaps uh, that, that society and technology is already making for us? Clive, to understand that technology is about science. And being a lawyer is about being a scientist in the ability to test the critical skills. What we have to train all of us to do and our students to do is to do that critical thinking and that analysis. It's not about regurgitation. It's not about who could cram the best and just litter the, um, the paper with, with, with all the cases. It is about training those skills that will be needed now. When you go into the courtroom, in the judge alone trial, when you would have some lawyers who would be saying, members of the jury, lies, lies, lies. No, what I said now, I'm no longer the high court. I don't want to encourage in closing speeches. And Clive, you were a prosecutor. You can imagine us doing a closing speech now using PowerPoint. All I would put on my slide would be, beyond reasonable doubt, witness A, unshaken, witness B. And you know what defense counsel would put? Lies, lies, lies. So it's all about using the technology. You could imagine in the, in the summation to the jury. To me, what the judicial officer could do now is give them their books, let them take notes, use a PowerPoint. For the students, we have to teach them what, and we are learning too, so we have to impart that knowledge, not just content, but how to deliver your content. I knew many of the students wouldn't want to come on this afternoon. That's why I have the paid actresses, Ayana, for free. You know how expensive free is? Shikari for free, you know, expensive free is, right? Nothing like a free actress, you know? So what I'm saying is, Clive, and you would know this, it's not about being dramatic, but it's being, it's honing in. Gone are the days of trying to woo the jurors. The days now to come and excite that courtroom with your knowledge, with your skill, with your ability to say, listen, there are 10 points, but two really are the crux of the matter. Let us focus on it. And that is what I know we will be doing with the way we will now be giving things beforehand. It's not, I'll tell you something, for the law of evidence, and I'm telling you this straight, you'll be getting the notes beforehand. Normally I PowerPoint and give the notes after. I'm giving you my notes beforehand. I'm giving you all the notes for everything. Go and read it. Because that won't make you do well in my evidence. What will make me do well is Blastland. Read it and let's come and discuss Blastland. And I divide them in groups and I already know Clive, I want to know in class. I'm going to be calling people names so they could figure they could turn off the video, turn off the mic. I hope when your name gets called, you're there. And you know, I could call names. Thank you. There are a few questions in the chat. I'll, I'll just go through some of them. This is from Hazel Debedin. This is a big change and a few at the very top don't seem to embrace willingly. Do we have soft strategies to persuade? When you went to those at the top, I just want to tell you that the strategies to persuade, people haven't been persuaded as yet. And I know there are some people, it's not that they need to be persuaded, you know. It isn't that they are not willing, they are willing. But there's a level of, you know, we didn't grow up, for those of, well, me who's 453, everybody else is much younger on this platform. But when you didn't grow up in the technology, you have to adjust and everybody resists change. And there's a level of, oh God, I'm so old now and I have to learn this. But the point is, there's so many methods now that can be used to help you understand and that's where the law schools have stepped up not only just the students
but to also assist those who are delivering. And in the courtrooms, that was, that's what we're doing. We had one practitioner very early in the day who objected to a particular hearing. And by the time he was finished, we could not have asked for a better advocate for why we need virtual hearings. Because it is really to show that level of three P words I've said in that method next judgment. Patience, practice, precision. And we are going to get it right. Listen, you're never going to get 100% buy-in. You're never going to get 100% buy-in. But you're going to get the majority. And all of you all who are at the law school now, you're not Generation Z. And Generation Z only knows technology. You know, many people haven't probably been listening to me, but busy multitasking. You know what multitasking is for a young person now? Being able to send tweets and social media and listen and do whatever by the eating something and using the washroom. This question, this question is from, it's a, using the washroom part I'm laughing at. This question is from no. I was just throwing it because I don't have to keep the energy and I have to keep the excitement. So Noble Smith is asking, in cases where a witness is home giving evidence, what would be your recommendation to guarantee truthfulness? Sure. Now, remember, I think the question is, you don't want to guarantee truthfulness. That is for the finder of fact, the jury or the judge, the judicial officer to make determination. What I think you really want to ask is, how do you guarantee the due diligence and the honesty and integrity of the process. That while, for example, I'm talking, is not somebody telling me, passing me pieces of paper and telling me what to say, or a lawyer sitting across socially distant where Ayana and um, Shikari are giving guidance. And what I want to tell you is this is where innovation comes in, the rise up part of it. Is it that you're going to have perhaps a marshal who would normally be in the courtroom who would be, you know, where the premises are looking? Is it that you're going to have designated places where witnesses will now give their evidence? These are things you can think about. You can have designated places where witnesses, not necessarily coming into courtrooms, will be giving their evidence. So if they're home, you could probably ask them to do a scan. Of course, everybody will tell you, yeah, you could do a scan, but somebody could crawl in on the ground. I've actually had to do it once when a judge was on the platform and I had to not be seen. But the point I'm saying is, that you will never get 100% food food, but the more and more people who buy in and understand process, the more and more we're going to get it right. But you can't really prevent somebody. I mean, when witnesses are being briefed, they're not supposed to be coached. I mean, you don't know what they've seen and not seen. At the end of the day, it is the witnesses' ability to answer. And let me tell you, witnesses will be found that you find they're looking down all the time, or they're always looking up. And those are the kind of skills we have to teach you now. Take off your glasses to make the point. If somebody always looking up so, so. I see it on camera all the time when I'm in Hollywood. And many actresses and actors, when they're forgetting their lines, they look left or they look right. And I always make the point to those with me. I said, they forgot the lines, so they're looking at the cue cards. I know you're not from Hollywood. Have no fear. We're going to make this a Hollywood experience or Bollywood or wherever you want to be. The, the next two years are the years for you to be the stars. And we are going to be there helping you along the way. Um, the next two questions could be related, so I'll just um, offer them up at the same time. One is from William McFord from EDLS. Justice Lucky, do you feel virtual hearings would have a negative effect on jury trials that require more of a personal element? And Craig Tuckett is asking, during in-court hearings, an attorney can read the body language that would help in their advocacy. Would virtual hearings now hinder this? And if so, how can we remedy this? Okay, and again, let's look at the personal element. Why is the determination of truth so focused in the jury trial on the personal element? And you tell me it's because it's persons and you want to convince them. You are supposed to be persuading people by the truth, by the credibility of witnesses, by loopholes and cases, by the strength of a case. And what happens when you do not have the jury trial? I sat as the judge alone. I mean, you have to understand, you really have to take a very scientific, comprehensive approach. This is the offense. These are the elements. This is what the prosecution is relying on because the onus is on them, the burden of proof, to prove standard beyond reasonable doubt, satisfied to the extent that you are sure. So when you have the jury, is it that you just want the jury to make a determination based on who is the better looking lawyer? Then I would always lose. Thank God to the prosecutor. I won some cases. If that was the case, I would have always been losing. It is the ability to take, so you have trial ad, but trial ad will not have to be taught in a different way, but developing different skills. It's like sometimes people tell you when they lose one sense, how to develop another. They're not supposed to just crawl along and say, well, you know, I have so many senses and I lose one and that's the end of it. No. And what we have to do, I mean, the question has been asked, that is the whole personal element and reading. Well, as a judicial officer, just take up the glasses. Can you imagine if you're making a submission and you see me doing this? And as even worse, we have to train ourselves not to be so up. You're up front and personal, we've seen you. Look who I was able to tell Barbara was enjoying it. Barbara, that's you, my dear. 
with all the prizes that you get in the courier service i'm sorry we can't deliver to you because you just have too much to pay i'm seeing the student even as may maybe pronouncing your name wrong going like this probably saying oh god that's one of justice hockey steel joke again that's why you have to learn to read people now if you're going to be depending on people standing up but no you can't read them like that you've got to read them look at rexy rexy looking as though is this for real we have Famika, Famika is ever playing all fours, dominoes, or poker, haven't you? Because I can't even read your face. Shanika rocking back and said, I wonder if I'm looking good in the headphones. That's what you're saying. Sorry? So that's what I'm saying in terms of being able to read witnesses. And so you're just going to have to develop a different skill. But witnesses themselves have to understand. And people who are assessing them, it's really about your ability to be truthful, to speak the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I find this is exciting. And for judicial officers not to be raising eyebrows and looking as, oh my God, or worse, saying curse words. Because you can't be saying curse words. People will record you even though you tell them to record. People were told not to record this. I am telling you my cyber glasses. I have seen some people press record for the session already. And if I see it on eBay, if I see it on YouTube, mm -hmm, I'll come in. Copyright, just remember. This is a question Gary for the other. That thumbs up, Gary. Look, I catch Gary with the thumbs up, and I'm seeing about 20 of you are on. You're going to be sharp. We may not know in the courtroom what we're doing, and this is where Shakare plays an important role. Shakare, as the GRC, even the role of the Judicial Research Council, it's not to be in books researching, it's also in the courtroom to help, as I said. Shakare using an initiative and placing on screen what the judges needed to see rather than digging in all the record of appeal files. It's just about changing the skills we have and fine-tuning others that we took for granted. Let the truth be told, when you're on screen, you put on 10 pounds, I'm on the keto diet. All I would say right now is I lost nine pounds and I try my best. I too have to try and get on somebody cheeks. I can't help it, it's genetic. The, the, this, the, the next question is for the evidence tutors. Will LEC students be able to attend virtual hearings and get signed off as court attendants? As, sorry, this is, I guess, for senior tutors. Will LEC students be able to attend virtual hearings and get signed off as court attendance is required by the program? Um, Principal, if I may just pop in here, because I did read that question. I guess that is one for senior tutors, and that will have to be determined because a lot depends on what the court's schedule is like and which hearings are available for students to be able to attend. And of course, the verification process that indeed they did attend. Traditionally, you have, you have officers signing the sheets to say they did. We would have to have a verification process in place to ensure that they were they indeed attended and did glean some knowledge from that. But that is something that all students, I'm sure, across the region will hear a lot more on from their individual senior tutors and principals in due course. And I, I just as a matter of note, not hurrying anyone, but we're 502. I know this session has been very exciting. I see so many questions. I, I have, here. But I have principal two, go on this a Yeah, I, I have just two more questions. Uh, this one is from, I don't know if I'm pronouncing you use Han's name properly. How do you combat many of the issues associated with virtual hearings, including, for example, prompting of witnesses accused by their attorneys? We have said, again, when you have witnesses, and this is all about how you do the location of the witnesses, where the attorneys are, there has been a matter in our high court, in the civil division, in which there were witnesses, and the witnesses actually gave their testimony from a, a conference room in the chambers. In other words, you set protocols. Let me tell you what it boils down to. So you, you leave, understand, you have to set your protocols, and you have to go with the integrity of attorneys. I want, I want if many of us remember that we are attorneys who take an oath of office. We are taught ethics in the profession. Even the ethics course will have to be adjusted. We have to, I mean, I'm modified to deal with this whole thing. We are taught that we have there are certain things you do and you don't do. So when we are looking at it from the perspective of, well, witnesses could be prompted. It should be in the main, witnesses are not prompted because we know that is wrong to prompt them. We can brief them beforehand, but we are not meant to prompt them. And again, when you set the protocols, there is going to be adherence. I am firm in my mind. You'll always have those cases in which there wasn't. But you know what? One day, one day, Kumbote, those people will be found out. But have your protocols beforehand so everybody, all the parties know where witnesses are, what is going to be done. They can raise their challenges. You can say how oh, you're going to address the challenges. That, to me, is what has to be done with these virtual hearings. And they are happening in Trinidad and Tobago, meaning virtual hearings are taking place with witnesses, not just their cases in Australia 
where there are witnesses in other jurisdictions giving their evidence in criminal matters because Australia said straight, we can't hold back the system. Trinidad and Tobago saying straight, we can't hold back. The Caribbean is saying it, we will not be held back. Forward ever, backward never. Thanks, Gary. The, the, the final question is from Daryl Palmer. Justice Lucky, do you believe that more needs to be done with technological and innovation in the Caribbean justice system? Do you also believe that courts need to embrace more technology in court processes like electronic filing and service of documents on parties? Yes, and in the Caribbean, again, I want to say we are moving as a region. I want us to remember CARIPOM, Caribbean, a region. So for example, in Trinidad and Tobago, we have electronic file. We have embraced the technology. We are sharing. And it isn't that Trinidad and Tobago is the only one sharing. When, for example, we were doing maximum sentence indications, that was being done already in St. Lucia, in the OECS, and we learned from their practice direction. We tweeted, we shared with Jamaica. Jamaica tweeted, we shared with Barbados. It's a sharing experience. There are some countries in the Caribbean that are ahead of Trinidad and Tobago with the laws on um, electronic filing and electronic signatures and so. So it's about all of us working as a group to see, well, okay, who has the best when it comes to the admissibility of digital evidence? Who has the best when it comes to the practice directions dealing with electronic filing and electronic signatures? Who is dealing with virtual courts? How are some of you dealing with jury trials? That's where these platforms, and it's a point that Clive and Norman, myself, keep making, and Clive has done this afternoon, we can have this level of discussion and moving forward. We are not operating in silos. So yes, I am saying in Trinidad and Tobago, it is court driven because the chief justice, I always tell him it's because he's an engineer, he's a mechanical engineer, trained to fix, trained to move forward and trained to think as a visionary. People say it takes a village. I say, following the words of Laura Dubé, who sat on the Supreme Court in Canada, 93 years old, now retired, of course, she said, it takes a vision. And in the Caribbean, we have our vision. What we have not done is we have not been confident about our vision. And when you get your practice directions in your cases, send it to your colleagues in the other jurisdictions. Let them see that we are doing it. Take a picture of these sessions and send it. It isn't only Cambridge and Harvard and all these schools. We're doing it in the Caribbean. Let's be proud of what we have. Let's share the knowledge. And let's share it with everybody else. Let's see how we could tweak. Tweak and move forward. And is it Twitter? Tweak. Um, Principal, I think we'll make this the last question. I think it comes from Marvin, I see. And it deals with how would you, the judiciary deal with remote witnesses and the concept of content of court. Now we will make that the last one. The sure. Content of court concept and remote witnesses. So, sure. in terms of remote hearing, what we'll have to make sure before you just you go to contempt. Contempt, of course, is something you make as a finding of fact when there's been disregard. We have to make sure that persons, when they do not appear at home in a virtual hearing, and I said, should contempt be not there? Is it that the person lost electricity? Is it that the person was not given the correct link? Is it that the person didn't know how to use the technology? And that's why I'm saying beforehand, what prevents practicing? What prevents persons or witnesses from being given? Do you know what we do in Trinidad and Tobago? When we have, of course, the list of witnesses, for any of the courts or the attorneys, actually send them a little manual, a little bit of what to do. What it means is, and you give people an opportunity through the registrar, you don't know, contact Jillian, look at the judge. You can talk to the registrar and you could say, listen, I'm having issues with Microsoft team. Or I try this and I don't know what to do. I am nervous, what can we do? You don't, because on the day, there may be problems. For this session this afternoon that started at four, we ran through a session, Clive Norman and I yesterday evening. Mario friends very much again, running through a session. I even brought up backup IT. Not that I needed it, Mario was great. In terms of Suzanne assisting, in terms of Ayana and... Um, Shikari being threatened. If things went wrong, what would happen to them? Degrees would be lost. Jobs would be gone the line. I'm saying this is how you now have to change. So before you go to contempt of court, you have to give people an opportunity to be heard. What happened? Because don't presume everybody has a 100% efficient electricity. And that's where courts in Trinidad and Tobago in the region have had to be more understanding. I end by saying it is not about being with blinkers. I have had a, a lady come into my court in slippers and the police were telling her, go, go, you can't come before the judge in slippers. I said, come forward. When that woman told me she had been in Port of Spain since six o'clock, 
because she wanted to be here for the nine o'clock matter. And the slippers were bought as a result of the shoes being busted. And she had a little baby, which she left out. And I, I made the whole court stop. I said, go and get your baby, please. Don't leave your baby with a stranger. Because she was so baby, so I'll come in the court. We have to change the way this idea of the judge is a stoic person who will, you know, I'm guilty, not guilty. Those days are done. And they're done a long time. And if we want to go those days, the robots will take over because that's what we have over robots. Over robots, we have emotional intelligence and we have compassion. Let us not lose it because then Papa and her friends will take it over. Thank you, Rexy. Um, Principal, I, I believe that is it. I, I know we went over a bit. Um, uh, Justice Lucky, so many questions. So, so I, I'm, I'm reading somebody. Oh, Neil Ali, I'm calling you out. Oh, my God, I just love her. Um, um, Sephora, uh, we outside with Justice Lucky. Alyssa Richardson, amazing presentation. Thank you so much. I mean, the room is a buzz. That is, uh, and snaps, snaps, snaps from Sophia Cooper. Um, it's really been very uh, interesting. I am going to step aside again. I believe that we have Principal Aina with us. I'm not sure if Principal Samu is in the room, um, but I, I will open the floor to any of the principals right now if any of the principals wish to say anything before we have the vote of thanks and then sign off. So um, I will be quiet a little bit and leave the floor open. Principal Aina, if you're still with us. Of course, I think Principal Gladys, of course, is still with us. And I, I don't know if Principal Sam is I close my mic. I, I just like to acknowledge um, Principal Aina, who is still with us, and also um, senior tutors, Yula Lee Greenaway and Cheryl Ann Jerome. And then by, I don't think Principal um, Samaru is with us, but I'd, I'd like to invite um, Principal Aina, if she wishes to say something, um, to do so. Okay, maybe now. Yes, um, good afternoon, everybody. Hi, Principal. Are you hearing me? Yes, Principal, welcome Thank again. Yes, Principal, we can hear you. Obviously, I'm totally over the 53 age group. And so um, we are here trying to get the, um, the same level of excitement that Justice Lucky is able in our useful ways to bring to the the students, uh, both Ms. Greenaway and I sat through the entire session and I, I think we have nearly got into the age group. And so we will try to emulate some of that. I know Mr. Davis who was on WhatsApp with me has just told me how much there is such great collaboration between himself, um, Justice Lucky and Mr. Guy. And he says the test of our collaboration will be when we disagree. And um, I have no doubt I will hear about that. But what I want to say to students is what Justice Lucky will have said, some of what she will have said is that, of course, um, we will all go through this. We will embrace it. We will treat it as an adventure. And it is a time for a great deal of collaboration. And indeed, we will disagree on things, but we must do so without being disagreeable. And uh, I think this is the first time, as Principal Galani said, we've had the opportunity to have all our students on one platform. And so that alone is just simply exciting. And so I want to thank Justice Lucky on behalf of all the law schools. And I hope we will continue to have collaborations like this so that all our students can be exposed in the same way. Thank you very much, Justice Lucky, for that inspiring delivery. And thank you to the, our colleagues at EDLS, uh, Principal Bastian Galanis and Senior Tutor Acting Mr. Guy for setting up this session so that we could all be a part of it. I think at one point I looked, there were over 400 people on the platform. So, so that's really simply wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Principal. Um, thank you very much, uh, Principal Aina. Um, I, I had asked my good colleague, Mr. Davis, if he wished to say anything, but he told me he would prefer to, to stay in the background. So I'm not going to put him on the spot. I promise you I'm not going to put him in the spot. And Principal Aina, having spoken and given um, the, the thanks on behalf of both of our schools and so on, 
uh, Mrs. Jerome Alexander, if you're with us, would you like to say anything on behalf of uh, the Woodingo School? I don't think Mrs. Jerome Alexander is with us. Okay, I, I thought that's what I knew. There were so many people. Uh, Principal Ina is right there. There were over, there were almost like 450 uh, people close on in the room at one point in time. Uh, it was absolutely tremendous. That is that is fantastic. So we have to round off now. It's 5.15. I'm going to call upon um, a year two student of the Eugenie Cruz Law School, Ms. Kishina Thompson, who will give the vote of thanks um, as we go forward. Um, before I step off, look out for Vincent, look out for Wilson. They are already with us. And the prospect of legal mal malpractice, if we don't use them, Frightening, I, I think, but exciting at the same time. So, Kashina, um, you're up. I'm here. Thank you, Mr. Guy. Wow, what a stellar presentation. Uh, Madam Justice Gillian Lucky, on behalf of the faculty, staff, and students of the three law schools, Eugene DePute, Norman Manley, and Hugh Wooden, we want to extend a heartfelt thank you for talk, taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to us about virtual trials and matters of evidence, or as I would call it, virtual hearings, evidence, and excellence. The words you've imparted on us today are unmatched. I'm sure each of us are at awe. In these times, the information obtained in today's session is not only timely, but necessary and inevitable. We can't express our heartfelt thanks enough, so once again, we wanna say thank you Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Kashila. well said. Emmeline, don't worry, this will not be just a first and last, I promise you, yes. There'll be more to come, <laughs> I promise you. Um, Justice Lucky has already agreed and we have so much in store, you'll be surprised. Um, and let me thank everyone, I must give a very special thanks to the principal of the Eugene Bridge Law School, Mrs. Tanya bastian Galanis who um, did everything possible to ensure that it, um, the session took place. I'm not going to tell you all that I made. I have to open the purse and spend some money on it. I'm not going to say that far, because then I will get in trouble. But she did everything to make, sh to make sure that it came through. In closing, we have had, okay, the, chairman of the, council, we, we've had the chairman okay. of the Council of Legal Education address all three law schools at first. We've had Justice Lucky address all three law schools, another first. So the opportunities that COVID-19 has presented us are limitless. And thank everyone for attending this evening. Thank you again, Principal Granis, Principal Ina, my two fellow uh, senior tutors, Ms. Jerome Alexander, Ms. Yuleli Greenaway, and all my colleagues. And of course, you students, and most of all, Justice Lucky. Thanks again, so on. Everyone have a great evening. Do enjoy. Take care. Thank you. Bye, everybody.